I'm back today talking all things brows abandonment, brows abandonment flows, Clavio. Hey guys, what's up? Monica here. Welcome back. If you are new around these parts, thanks for stopping by. My name is Monica. I am a direct to consumer e-commerce founder. I am a email marketing consultant specifically on Clavio and so many other things, but mostly we're going to talk about email today. So last week I was talking to a client about their browse abandonment flow and they asked me this question. What are we trying to achieve in the browse abandonment flow and what content should we be using here? Cool. Let's dive into this. If you don't have your browse abandonment flow set up, get a pen and paper. It's time to take notes. Let's brainstorm. Okay, so I want you to think about the browse abandonment. A bra browse abandonment is like a tongue twister, but anyways, I want you to think about the browse abandonment flow in terms of your customer life cycle. Obviously, if someone is browsing your website, then they know who you are, they have made it to your website. But if they enter the browse abandonment flow, it means that they haven't added to cart. And of course they haven't purchased, not this time. So let's talk a little bit about what a customer has to do to end up in the browse abandonment flow. To get in the browse abandonment flow, they have had to look at a product. So the trigger is viewed product, but they haven't abandoned a cart. So added a product to cart or checked out. So here's what that looks like in Clavio. Here is what your browse abandonment flow in Clavio is going to want to look like. You can set this up by just setting up the standard browse abandonment that's going to be triggered off of viewed product. Um, again, the code for embedding that viewed product activity is down below. Um, so the standard flow for browse abandonment has these first three flow filters of checkout started zero times since starting this flow, because if the checkout started, you're going to want them to go to the abandoned cart flow. They have also placed orders zero times since starting this flow, because that will trigger them into their post-purchase flow. And they have not been in this flow for the last 30 days. The reason that you want to have this last 30 days triggers trigger or excuse me, flow filter there is because you don't want someone who views your product three consecutive days in a row um, to get this flow three consecutive days in a, in a row. Uh, so this will kind of prevent that repetitive trigger from happening if someone's viewing your product often. And then I like to add this placed order zero times in the last 30 days. If they have recently placed an order, then you aren't going to want them to get the same email again within 30 days. Um, ideally, they are potentially going to be in another flow. And a lot of times people may have questions about the product and go back to the product product page post-purchase, you don't want them to have this triggered again. Um, so this is how I set this up. And then I personally, for the browse abandonment flow, do like to have smart sending on so that they aren't getting bombarded with emails if um, they have just received like a campaign or something like that um, because they can always get this email again if they view the product again within the next 30 days. So this is what it should look like in your account. Cool. So I bet a few of you are wondering, okay, but it's telling me I have to set up viewed product. Awesome. If you still need to set up the code so that this viewed product gets triggered, I'm leaving the link below in the description with a step-by-step -step on how to do this. But let's get back to this customer question that happened. Here are some things that I like to share with my client to get them thinking about what content should get shared in the browse abandonment flow. So someone obviously came to your website, they were just looking, lots of people window shop, or they were looking for something specific. Have you ever gone and looked for something specific? 
but you couldn't find that one answer you were looking for, so you just got fed up and left. Cool. <laughs> Me too. Duh. <laughs> So is it possible that someone was on your product page and they couldn't find that one piece of information they were looking for? Maybe it's there, maybe they just didn't have the patience to find it. And so they actually left your website. Now let's think about what the common questions are that you get about your product. You might receive these via customer service, customer chat, or social media. Can you answer some of those common questions in your browse abandonment flow? Of course. Another angle on browse abandonment. Maybe someone's just window shopping and they don't really have enough reason to buy right now. They don't feel influenced enough. There's just, yeah, they like it, but they can't spend that money right now. Is there a way for you to create FOMO? Literally FOMO, if you don't know what FOMO means, fear of missing out <laughs> through some kind of testimonial or press placement, influencer placement, something like that. So what validation does your brand have that you could show to this person to prove to them, trust me, you're going to want to buy this or you're going to miss out. Or alternatively, maybe someone simply just didn't have their credit card nearby, walked away from their computer. It's on one of the 4,000 tabs they have up. Um, if you have 4,000 tabs, put your hand up. So maybe they just need a simple reminder to come back and browse again. No problem. So let's just recap. Okay, content you could include. You can always include the actual item that they were browsing. This is just a dynamic block that will show them what products they recently viewed. So always good to show that so they can go back to that product if they're interested. But maybe they weren't interested in that product, so it could also be good for you to show them a section of your best sellers if you have multiple products. That way they can kind of bri br br browse your whole offering if they're just window shopping and there's more to see. The other two things that you can include are things like those common FAQs to so provide answers or answer the questions that they may need answered to purchase. And then creating FOMO with validation, whether that's through an influencer placement, press placement, or customer testimonials. Hopefully this gave you a couple of ideas of things you can include, include in your browse abandonment email. Questions on this? Leave them down below. Okay, if this content has been helpful so far, can we just go ahead and click the subscribe button? <laughs> Last but not least, of course, you want to make sure that you have clear CTAs and that you're testing, test, test, test your CTAs. Of course, also test those subject lines. Okay. Those are all my tips. So I want to dive in and show you a couple of browse abandonment, browse abandonment. This is such a mouthful. Browse abandonment flows and emails that I really love from brands, as well as I'll share a couple of subject lines that I think are just amazing for the browse abandonment. Okay, so Viori, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but I recently received this browse abandonment email from them. Um, and I was actually truly shopping on their website. So it says, did you see something that you liked? Which that kind of subject line really drew me in. Um, because I was obviously looking at their product and it feels very, very specific to the action I was taking on their website. Um, love that they're showing kind of some of their core values or core um, offers up here of free shipping, free returns. And so what did you think? This headline, I just love it. We noticed you're eyeing the style, come back and make it yours before it's gone. So this is great if you have a multi-product line where we're not talking specifically about one product, but we're being pretty general. Um, they say I'm this style. I mean, you could even use a, a custom um, format here to say like this pant, this shirt, whatever. Um, take another look. This is a great CTA because it's not just shop now. It's just like come, come browse with us again. 
And then of course, adding in, this is likely a, di a dynamic block of their most popular products, or maybe it's most popular female products. Um, hard to tell, but love that. Um, and yeah, it's really just very, very simple, but a great browse abandonment example. Okay, the other email I'm gonna show you, yes, it is my brand, but I think that this is just a great contrast, and especially if you have a small um, product line or a singular core product, this is going to be a great example for you. Um, I really love thinking about the browse abandonment as someone potentially leaving your site because they weren't fully convinced yet that um, it was time for them to purchase. And a lot of times it could be that they need more information um, or more convincing. And so uh, one of our browse abandonment emails, the title is um, the science behind the, these ingredients. Um, a little bit about our beliefs and our approach, and then the actual key nutrients that are in our product that are going to support symptoms. And so we dig into the science a little bit more. Um, we offer learn more so that they can come and learn more about our ingredients and just get back to our website. And then this is a dynamic block. It's just not showing here. So normally our product is here and it gives them the option to shop. Um, so this is just providing additional product information and not necessarily hinting at the fact that they were browsing and looking at the product. Um, a customer wouldn't necessarily become aware that we knew they were browsing the product, rather we're nudging them with just some additional information. So another option for you to test with your brand. All right, that's all I got for Browse Abandonment today. I hope that you're on your way to create your first or update your existing Browse Abandonment flow. If you are, let me know below how it works what you're excited about, what you're putting in it. If this was helpful, tell me. I love to hear from you. If you found this information helpful in any way, please go ahead and click subscribe to support my channel. And make sure you come back for more e-commerce and email marketing tips, tricks, and yeah, all that good stuff. See you next time.